Thanks. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, for your kind introduction. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for being here despite the incipient lunch break. So I'm trying to be very quick in my presentation. As you can see, my talk is about the mechanical characterization of uh, metamaterials produced by additive manufacturers. This work is uh, in cooperation with the biomedical company Lincotech and with Professor Berto, with whom I have the privilege to investigate these materials in the last almost 10 years. And so, as you probably know, metamaterials uh, are produced by, a, let's say, a repetition, regular repetition of a special pattern of the same unit cell. Uh, in the most common uh, strut-based lattices and nodes located at the vertices and or at the edges of uh, the unit cells are linked through slender uh, elements uh, denoted usually as struts. And the most appealing characteristics of this material is that uh, we can tune their multifunctional properties acting on the topology of the unit cell rather than on the materials, on the base material which the struts are made of. Uh, regarding the static mechanical properties, so closed form equations were derived uh, by fundamental works done by Ashby and Gibson. And uh, they were able to uh, rationalize as a function of the relative porosity, yield strength, and uh, uh, stiffness, uh, distinguishing two distinct mechanical behaviors. Uh, uh, let's say determined by uh, the parameter M, that is the Maxwell stability criterion parameter. And so for positive values, these parameters, we have uh, a stretching dominated behavior. For negative values, we have a bending dominated behavior. And these distinct behaviors differs also in the uh, collapse mechanisms. In the former case, we have a sequential multiple collapse uh, while in the second case, we have a more gradual and mostly uniform uh, diffuse uh, collapse of the lattice. Uh, here we have collected a, a large amount of data taken from the literature in which you can see uh, that the gibson Ashby equations are able to capture uh, most of the experimental data. Interestingly, all the data are, uh, let's say, um, concentrated near the linear trend in double logarithmic scale predicted for bending nominated lattices, even though uh, most of these cells are categorized as least nominally as stretch dominated. And so this highlights the influence of, uh, let's say, deviation of the as built geometry from the as designed one, producing this deviation from stretch dominated bending nominated behavior. So uh, even li uh, little understood is the fatigue behavior of these materials, even though it is of great concern for their uh, industrial applications, mainly because uh, the architecture of these materials is an intrinsic factor of weakening due to the complex force uh, flow of force lines producing elevated con uh, stress concentration at the nodes. And in addition, we have a synergistic effect with manufacturing imperfections in which we have a additional introduction of stress freezers in, in the lattice. So for all these reasons, uh, we want to further investigate the static and the fatigue behavior of metamaterials. And in particular, we are carrying out static and fatigue uh, tests on uh, different cellular lattice topologies and we make use of acoustic emission uh, technique to infer some information about uh, the failure mechanism of this metamaterial. So uh, coupons were fabricated using a biomedical grade, titanium 6,4, uh, employing a powder uh, laser bed fusion process whose process parameters were optimized in order to achieve a compromise, a trade-off between uh, let's say productivity 
adequate for industrial applications and sufficient geometrical accuracy uh, in order to have good uh, mechanical properties. So as you can see here, we have printed five topologies selected uh, among uh, uh, a vast literature review we have carried out in the past, uh, are highlighting uh, the topologies that are most promising from a biomedical uh, application point of view. Uh, so uh, all the uh, topologies have the same as design strap thickness, equal to 500 microns, that was found in previous works to be, let's say, a threshold value be below which we have, uh, let's say, great manufacturing imperfection impacting very detrimentally on the fatigue strength. And uh, all the specimens have the same as design porosity, 75%, uh, optimal for a biomedical point of view. Okay, as you can see here, uh, two uh, topologies are nominally categorized as stretch dominated at the star shape, or equivalently BCCZ, and the octetrust one. While the remaining three are nominally bending dominated, including this trabecular structure in which we have no longer a periodic arrangement of cells, but we have a, a, a random arrangement of uh, struts resembling uh, the architecture of natural trabecular bone. So we have carried out both static and fatigue tests under compression, compression, uh, axial loading. Uh, we have carried out both monotonic and cyclic a static test, the, the, la the latter in order to determine uh, the stabilized cyclic um, stiffness modulus or, or, or Young's modulus of uh, the bonds. We have carried out fatigue tests using two distinct machines. One was a resonant testing machine working at high frequency to have, uh, let's say, uh, data in a reasonable uh, time interval and exploring also long uh, fatigue lives. And we have employed also an electrodynamic machine. Uh, why? Because we wanted also to instrument some tests with an acoustic emission sensor. As you can see that were tested, uh, were positioned on the compression plate close to the cone. So here we see the results of uh, the static test. And so interestingly, we can see uh, that the star and the octet truss uh, displays a, a stretch dominated failure mechanism characterized by several uh, collapses. And they display also very high uh, Young's modulus and yield strength to com uh, in comparison with uh, the uh, band denominated uh, lattices, X shaped and trabecular. Also, interestingly, uh, we can observe that the TCO, even though nominally categorized as bandy dominated has a rather uh, stretch dominated behavior again with multiple collapses and also with uh, Young's modulus and yield strength uh, comparable with uh, those displayed by the stretch dominated lattice. And so here you see, uh, let's say the results of uh, um, acoustic emission acquisitions in which we can see that for the star shaped specimens we have a, a sudden failure that concentrated along one plane and most of the most intense acoustic emission events are uh, concentrated just before the final collapse of the lattice. On the contrary, in the octet and the TCO lattices, we have a more distributed failure, either along 45 degrees inclined planes or uh, in layer wise in horizontal planes and the acoustic emission events are spread throughout the loading curve beyond the last division. Uh, regarding the such a dominated lattices, but, uh, sorry, the, the bending dominated lattices, we can see that the failure in the X-shaped specimen initiates layer-wise and then propagate in, in shear plane, while uh, the failure in trabecular specimens uh, is distributed over the entire specimen due to the ran random arrangement of struts. In addition, we see 
accumulation of intense acoustic emission events throughout uh, uh, the loading pool of the specimen. So here we see uh, the ascent curves that we have collected under compression compression fatigue. And we have also normalized the fatigue curve with respect to the yield sign we have determined from study test. So interestingly, we can see that uh, the star octet and TCO have the highest fatigue strength, perhaps due to their uh, stretch dominated behavior. And also we can see that uh, the TCO and the star have a very, very high relative fatigue strength, above 0.4. And we are very happy about these results because this is a typical normalized fatigue strength of sound bulky uh, structural materials. Uh, on the contrary, lower at the normal fatigue strength were observed for the octet and the accent trabecular uh, on the order of 0.2. But surprising is the low uh, value of the octet truss uh, that, on the contrary, performed very well under static loading. And we can infer some explanation regarding this anomalous behavior looking at the fractographic analysis I will show later. So here we see the plots uh, in which we uh, report as a function of the number of cycles to failure, or better, the number of cycle of applied load, and the, uh, the steepness uh, evaluated through uh, the uh, stroke of the testing machine and uh, the acoustic emission events. So there is a clear correlation between the two trends. And so in particular, we can see a drop in the uh, steepness plot, uh, as long as we have starting accumulation of acoustic emission events. So this is, in my opinion, the most interesting part regarding the application of acoustic emission in monitoring this fatigue test, because these are tests that most, the most contribution to the loss of steepness is uh, uh, related to the onset of fatigue damage rather than to strain, strain softening um, uh, phenomena that uh, were inferred in some uh, works in the literature. Okay, so uh, for the star-shaped specimen and also for the truncating cubo or specimen, we can see uh, that the acoustic emission events are concentrated just before the final collapse. Uh, for the autotrust, we have, on the contrary, uh, a more spread, uh, uh, let's say, distribution of acoustic emission events, reflecting the uh, presence of failure in multiple planes and locations of the lattice. And uh, similar, uh, the behavior was also observed if, um, in the case of the band denominated lattices, uh, in which we have uh, failure in multiple planes or in multiple locations, and uh, many acoustic emission events uh, throughout the fatigue lag of the of the uh, lattices. So uh, here we have no optical micrographs of uh, uh, the critical hotspots of the specimens in which we have detected crack nucleation. And we can see here clearly uh, the detrimental effect of manufacturing imperfections in dictating the fatigue behavior. So highlighting even more also here the importance of achieving high manufacturing accuracy to achieve high uh, fatigue properties of these metamaterials. In addition, here, fractographic SEM analysis attested uh, the critical role of uh, nodes. In fact, uh, in the star shape and X shape, we have uh, uh, observed failure close to the junctions. While in the outer truss, we have observed a preferential failure of horizontal struts. If you carry out a finite element analysis of these lattices, and I'm coming to the conclusion, you will see that the horizontal struts, even though the uh, remote compressive load is compressive, they are uh, subjected to tensile loads. And so we know that a tensile fatigue is much more detrimental to compression fatigue, and this can explain the poor fatigue performances of uh, that is the of the trust. So now I come to the main conclusion that are listed here. Uh, I prefer not mentioning them. You can see them. And I wish you a, a nice lunch and the prosecution of the conference. Thank you so much for your attention. 
रखने के लिए 